All these radios that you can see here are radios that I have used through the year 2023. Many of them I bought this year only. I really spent a bit of money this year on new radios, but I feel I've reached now sort of my limit. I think I've got mostly what I need. There might be a couple more radios that I might be looking into in the future, but generally speaking, I feel very satisfied with what I have. So this video is a discussion of my favorite radio for the year. I know that's a tall order to choose only one from all these radios, but that's what I will do in this video. I'm going to talk about FM radios, I'm going to talk about medium wave radios, but mostly the focus will be on short wave radios. So maybe this might be helpful for you if you are thinking of buying a new radio. I am not an FM DXer, but I do, of course, listen to FM radio, uh, mostly in the car, to be honest, but I do enjoy some shows at home also on FM. So FM for me is all about clarity, and that means that speaker quality is important. So out of all these radios that I showed you, there are five that I prefer to use for FM. Let me just say at this point, I am going to discuss radios separately for what they are, which one is based on FM, which one is based on medium wave, which one is based on short wave. All in my opinion, of course, other people might have completely different opinions. But then at the end, I'm still going to select one from all these radios that I think that serves me the best. If I had to choose only one radio out of all these radios, which one would it be? That is what I will get to right at the end of this video. But for FM, the Eton Elite Traveler, this one, lovely radio. This is a, a very good radio. I got it actually during the COVID time. This was my first shortwave radio when I returned to shortwave listening, which was during the COVID time. I actually neglected this radio a bit over the years. This year I rediscovered it and it is very good also on shortwave. But for FM, this is lovely because what is nice about this little Eaton Elite Traveler 3 is the sound. This little speaker, it's got nice bass, it's quite clear. There's no adjustment, so you cannot adjust the tone or anything. But it's got clear, good quality sound. The next one in line would be the XH Data D109. For the same reason, this radio, it's also very, very sensitive on FM. It picks up quite distant signals. It is a radio with a very nice speaker. It's got nice deep sound. So for FM listening, this is also one that I can recommend and that I do use sometimes for FM listening. Nice about this one is the Bluetooth streaming. So I do also use that to listen to music because sometimes I stream music from the internet. So this one is very handy for that. And I enjoy the sound that comes from this one. Then when I'm traveling, this one is a real favorite on FM and also on other bands, which I will get to. But this little XH Data D219, it's got also a little bit of a deeper sound. It's not so tinny than some of these small portable radios. Some people say the sound is a bit muffled. Uh, for me, it's okay. I actually enjoy the sound that comes from this one. It's the kind of sound that you can listen to for a while. If you're in a hotel room somewhere and you need some music in the background, this one does it for me. It, it works well. So this is a favorite for when I'm traveling for FM. But then we get to the big boys. And obviously these radios are in a completely different class. This is the Panasonic RF. D30BT Bluetooth. You can also do Bluetooth streaming on this one. Plus it has DAB Plus, which I do use because DAB Plus is in a test phase in South Africa. But for FM, this one is also nice. It's got a very, very big antenna and the sound quality is good. It's very, they market this radio as crystal clear <laughs> and I think it's a little bit too crystal clear. Um, it sounds, you know, almost like a, like a CD. The sound is a little bit too digital almost, to my mind. So it's very, very clear, but I would not say uh, smooth, if you want to call it that. 
pleasant enough to listen to for a while, but not my not my top choice for FM though. Although it is it is a good radio. But for FM in terms of sensitivity, selectivity and sound quality, there is simply no contest. Out of all these radios that I've got here on the table today, this one, the Tivoli Model 1 BT is just unsurpassable. This is an absolutely fantastic radio. The sound that comes out of this radio is amazing. It's clear, but it's not harsh on the ear. It's got nice bass. It's really, really excellent quality sound. I also use this radio for streaming sometimes. This is my office radio, so when I am working and I need background music, I stream from the internet using the Bluetooth functionality on this radio. And I choose this one for the streaming because the sound quality, as I say, is excellent. So keep in mind, I'm not comparing these radios to one another. I'm telling you what is my favorite here out of what I have available, what I have in my house and what I can use. So when it comes to FM, if I have to choose the best FM radio I have, it will be this one, the Tivoli Model, Model 1 Bluetooth. So I'm going to show you briefly just a quick sound test on all five of these radios so that you can compare for yourself. A girl like you should never look so blue Joburg's best old school in R&D. Hot 1027. Come on, Mel. How about put it a crack? Have a look at you, darling. I think I already have. For medium wave DXing, I actually feel like I still need a really good radio for that. I do have one that I think is very, very good. And that's the one that I use mostly for, for medium wave DXing. And there's a second one that is also quite good, but it's, it's tuning functionalities is a little bit... Not finicky, but it's just difficult. Um, so that one is not perfect, although the reception on medium wave is very, very good. But for medium wave, mostly I have only four radios that I use for that. All these small portables that I showed you, they all can pick up medium wave and I can use them for medium wave DXing. The really, really tiny Texans, like the Texan PL368, this one here, they work actually quite well also on medium wave with those little plug-in ferrite antennas that you get for them. But I, I tend to not really use these ones. This one as well as the PL360 that I have. This one, yeah. They both work the same on medium wave, um, about the same sensitivity. And they are good. You can really, I've picked up interesting things on these. With, with this one, the PL368, when I was in Cape Town, I picked up a radio station from Angola that is hard to get here in Johannesburg. So it works, definitely, on medium wave. I just tend not to use these on medium wave for no particular reason, actually. So my medium wave radios, there are four, as I said. This one, the Sony ICFJ40 which I bought second-hand for a very good price. I don't even remember how much, but it was really, really inexpensive. A very strange radio, this one. You don't find much online about it. You, yeah, there's just really no information. But it's still being sold as new in the Middle East in particular. I know one of my viewers indicated they just recently bought this in Pakistan. But this was made originally in the 1980s, some sources say. Although there's not anything that I could find that actually confirms that it was made in the 1980s and then re revived now in the early 2000s. But it's been on the market again in the Middle East and Africa in the early 2000s and right up until now, as I say, in, in some countries. It has a very big internal ferrite antenna, probably about that length. So that is why, if you can see my fingers there, quite long like that more or less so that is why it's very good on medium wave and it is i haven't been doing much medium wave dxing lately because it's summertime now in south africa for me it works best in our winter time 
So from about April until about September, I have a lot of success on medium wave. Lately, no, it's not even worth trying. So I haven't been using any of these radios lately. But this is one that I do use, picks up distant signals. It's a full analog radio. So the tuning display is not digital, but yeah, it, it is fairly accurate and you can find the signals easily. Um, you can isolate them nicely. It's, it's a very good radio. So this is one of my options for medium wave DXing. The next one would be the Texan ICR110. Now this is the one that I said that the tuning is a little bit finicky. It doesn't have a tuning dial or a tuning wheel. So you need to actually punch in the frequencies manually, which means you need to know the frequencies. You can do a scan also. It does scan through the frequencies, but then it finds only the strong ones, obviously. If you are DXing for some weak signals, you need to manually punch in the frequency. But it works also really, really well. And this one has a very deep, nice sound as well. I actually neglected to mention this one in my FM discussion. Not for any reason, but I tend to not actually use this one for FM. Um, this one is a medium wave go-to radio. But it is also very, very good on FM. This is only an FM AM radio. Uh, it is very selective on FM. Very, very good sound. You'll hear just now when I when I play a little bit of a medium wave demonstration. So also a really, really excellent radio. Not that well known, this one, but you can buy it from, from Asia still. It's available in quite a number of stores. Also got a recording function and you can play, you know, this SD card capability. So you can play that as well. Very, very nice radio. Really excellent on medium wave, to be honest. I've had some very good medium wave catches on this one. Signals from Europe. And keep in mind, I'm in South Africa. So good medium wave radio. I just wish it had a tuning dial so that I you know, could search for frequencies manually instead of punching them in. So that's why this one just about doesn't make it to be my favorite medium wave radio. Now you'll be surprised to know that I also use my Tivoli sometimes for medium wave DXing. It's got at the back if I can turn the radio around, there is an external AM antenna inlet there. So I plug in my Texan AN200 antenna. You can plug it in there with a the cable. I do that. And then this one can be used for medium wave DXing, surprisingly. And it is actually quite nice then because this is a very selective radio. So you can separate signals with this very it's quite a tight tuning dial but it's very very accurate so the display here is very accurate you can find frequencies if you know if there are signals that are close to one another it's very easy to separate them with this tuning dial so i have used it the sound unfortunately unlike on fm the medium wave sound is a little bit muffled on this one so sometimes you might be able to find a very weak frequency, but you cannot actually make out too much because the sound is too muffled. So it works for medium wave. It's a fun, fun radio to try sometimes for medium wave. But again, this is not my favorite medium wave radio. Favorite medium wave radio would be the XH Data D808. This radio is just such an excellent radio in so many respects. It's got a big internal ferrite coil antenna and the medium wave reception is very good. It finds very, very weak signals. Unlike the Texan ICR 110 that I just showed you a little bit earlier, you can actually manually tune here. It's actually got a fine tuning little wheel here as well. But this is one of the flaws on this radio. This fine tuning wheel that I have here, mine broke. I haven't had the radio for more than about a year and a half and this thing doesn't work anymore. I actually opened up the radio to try to fix it but I couldn't see where and how to actually fix that. So that is a flaw. Né? That is a, a quality thing on this radio which is unfortunate because otherwise it's good. In many respects it's very good. And this is my main medium wave radio for medium wave DXing. I have caught interesting long distance signals on this one 
good quality reception. I got uh, Radio Rossi, for example, Vesti FM. These are Russian signals coming from Moldova. I picked them up on this one with just the internal antenna. In our winter time, of course, as I said, but it works. I pick up many signals from all over Africa on this one. I've even picked up Spain and Romania, but that was a while ago, about a year and a half ago. Also on this one. So, good. For medium wave, top of the line. Very, very good radio. Just a pity about uh, the quality. So I will show you again, just briefly, the sound quality on these four radios for medium wave. I It's not a DXing signal, it's just a local medium wave signal. But at least it will just give you a little bit of an idea of what these radios sound like on medium wave. Take 57 Radio Pulpit and 729 K Pulpit News. And schakel hier bij Radio Kansel, Radio Kapse Kansel, Charles van Onsel en hier zo baie welkom hier zo bij die Hartemoor Strand vandag aan die café een jeerlik om saam te kijken van ons luisteraar wat online luister en op jylle radios baie welkom lekker om saam te wees. Dit is nou drie uur in tyd vir jou nies. Hartelijke goeiemiddag. Die nationale energiereguleerder van Zuid-Afrika het Eskom sy aansoek vir kleinhandel tariewe en strukturele aanpassing vir 2024-2025 goedgekeer in sluitende gemiddelde tariefverhooging van 12,74% vir verskillende kategorieën kliënte om 600 megawatt wind en sonkracht by die netwerk toe te voeg. Die reguleerder het ook aan Eskom een on onderhandel onderhandelbare prijsooreenkomst van 6 jaar toegestaan. Dit is ondanks aansienlijke aandag van die samenlevingse kant af in die vorm van die geweld in die algemeen. Na voorsing wat Ronel Duivits en Maria van Staren van die geslags gelijkheidseenheid gedoen het, toen as vrouwen nie kan hoor nie, maak hulle dit nog meer kwesbaar vir geslags geweld. Duivits sê hulle het, hulle het bevind dove vrouwe vind het ook moeilik om toegang tot sociale netwerke, medische en rechtsdienste te verkry. I really enjoy medium wave DXing, but for me, my first love was and is short wave listening. So most of the radios that I buy, I get them for the short wave functionality, because that is what I will use them for most of the time. So everything that we have here, these are the radios that I use for my short wave listening. There are some that I use more than others, and that is what this video is about. I'm going to talk about my favorite shortwave radios. And then after that, we will get to my favorite radio for everything out of all these radios that we've seen today. So for me, a good shortwave radio should be a radio that picks up signals with just its whip antenna, more than just the strong signals because most radios can do that. It should at least give you a little bit of DXing capability. The sound should be good enough that you can actually figure out what you are hearing. And it should also ideally work well if you attach an external antenna, like a wire. Because I use a 10 meter, 27 feet wire very, very often when I am DXing. So out of all these radios, there are a couple that I tend to use most of the time. I'm going to start with this little one. Very unknown radio, Texan R808. It's no longer in production. I think it's almost impossible to get this now. It is actually exactly the same radio as the Grundig Mini World PE100. Excellent little radio. The band coverage is only from the 16 meter band up to the 49 meter band. But what I use this one for, it's like a little scanning radio. When I want to spend an evening DXing, before I actually sit down and start using one of my more capable radios, this one often is the one that gives me an idea of what is out there and of band conditions. I can scan through the bands very, very quickly, and this one will show me if it's actually a good night for DXing. And why I use this one and not any of the others is because it is so sensitive. This is a surprisingly sensitive little radio, as tiny as it is. It's got not the best quality sound, but it works. It's functional. It works on medium wave. It works on FM. 
it's just for me this is a tiny little radio that i can take with me anytime anywhere and this is my go-to radio often when i start an evening of dxing just to check what is out there because it's so quick and easy to scan through the bands i love this radio i wish they still made them so that i could get another one because the sensitivity on this one is is out of this world it's really amazing then with these very small radios, the Texan R909, the Retic SB115, the Texan R9012, I tend to use them at times, but they are obviously not my my favorite DXing radios, mainly because the well the display on this Texan and on the Texan R909 is not digital, so you know sometimes it's a little bit difficult to know what exactly you are listening to. The Retic SV115, of course, does have a digital display. Uh, this radio makes a lot of internal noise, and if you touch the screen here with your hand, it makes noise when you are listening. If you attach a 10-meter wire to this one, and you just keep your hands away from the screen, it actually works very, very well. Uh, it's a good DXing radio, this one. And while it's not my favorite um, for shortwave listening, I highly recommend this little radio if you are starting out with shortwave listening if you are looking into just maybe exploring a little bit the hobby and you want something that can pick up a lot of stuff this radio it's cheap it's less than 20 dollars these days even much lower than that sometimes just if you get this and if you use this to try to get into the shortwave listening hobby just get a wire you know a long piece of electrical wire about 27 feet 10 meters Attach it here, just tie it around the antenna and stretch that wire outside your house. Uh, it should be stretched out as far as possible. And you're going to be surprised what this little thing can do. And of course it can record, it can play SD cards. Very, very useful radio. So out of all my very small radios, I think this one is by far the most useful one. The Texan R9012 is a nice enough radio. I think it's a bit noisy. It's definitely not my favorite. It is sensitive. It picks up signals, but this is this is not a go-to radio in general listening conditions. For me, if I really want a very small radio to take with me, it is this one, the XH Data D219. While the Texan R9012 and the R909 and that R808 are full analog radios, this is a DSP-based radio with an analog display, but the sensitivity on this one is it's, it's just beyond amazing. I am always surprised what I get on my bigger radios, I get it on this radio. So for someone, again, if you are new to DXing, you want to try out shortwave listening, by all means consider this because this is so cheap i think it's only around ten dollars nowadays you will pick up pretty much what people with much bigger radios pick up the only issue here is that you don't know the exact frequency so it's a little bit difficult sometimes to identify what you are listening to in the old days when i started out with shortwave dxing when i was a teenager there were no manuals and stuff to tell you what you were listening to and the displays were not digital they were like this analog so we identified stations by listening until there was a station ID, until someone actually announced what station you were listening to. <laughs> That's probably something that you will need to do with this one. Or you can identify nearby stations. Sometimes it's easy to ID the BBC, for example, and then you can, by checking the shortwave sites, you can quite easily see what's the signal right next to it. So there are ways to identify your signals. I, I cannot recommend this one enough. It is, for the price, absolutely Top of the class radio it's just that you know you don't have that digital frequency display but otherwise very very good another one of my go-to shortwave radios is the texan pl368 a real favorite this is an all-rounder it does everything well it is good on medium wave it is very good on shortwave it's got ssb so single sideband functionality to listen to the utility signals, the spy signals. I only have two radios that can do that well, and, and this is one of them. And I do enjoy those utility signals. So for me, this radio is, is very good. The, the speaker is a little bit harsh, you can call it that, maybe a bit, you know, tinny almost. But it's very clear for that reason. So when you are listening to voice broadcasts, it's actually quite easy to, to understand what is going on and to identify the station. So 
this one is easily in my top two for my for my short wave radios i really really like this and it is a radio that i use again and again and again um I'm not doing a radio review yet, so I'm not going to tell you about all the functionalities on this radio, but it's it's good. It's a real all-rounder, and it can do pretty much anything that any big machine can do. The PL360 is similar, but it just doesn't have the single sideband, and it doesn't have the, the buttons for entering the frequency, so you need to search with the tuning wheel. But a nice, very, very good radio as well. So then... Another favorite is the Eaton Elite Traveler 3. Again, there's no single sideband on this one, but good on shortwave. It's got, uh, as I mentioned earlier already, it's got a good speaker. The sound is very, very good. Very small, short antenna, but when you clip on a wire, it, it works. The speaker sound on this one is so good that sometimes I use this one to identify very weak signals that I'm unable to identify on any of my other favorite radios. So if I pick up something on the PL368 and it's just not possible to hear what's going on, or on the XH Data D808, I come to this one, and often then I can at least identify the language. I can at least, you know, maybe pick up some words. So a good, good little shortwave radio. It's just not the one that I use all the time because it doesn't have single sideband. But out of my shortwave radios, my portable shortwave radios, this one is in the top three, definitely. And then we have the XH Data D109. It's a new radio, been on the market for about a year or so. Very similar, in my opinion, to the Eaton Elite Traveler 3. Uh, it's got a bit wider band coverage, this one, and a bit more functionality. You can actually change the bandwidth that you cannot do on the, on the Eaton Traveler. But this one also doesn't have single sideband. It does have Bluetooth functionality. Sound quality on this one, similar to the Eaton, very, very good. So that makes it a good radio to use. Good across all bands, FM, medium wave, short wave. Again, not my immediate go-to short wave radio because it doesn't have single sideband. And that is something that I tend to use quite a lot. But if you are considering... A little bit more expensive radio if you want to get into shortwave listening and perhaps you feel this one doesn't quite give you what you want and you want to pay a little bit more then this would be my suggestion xh data d109 it's not an expensive radio i think it's around 60 dollars or so these days and you will pick up lots of stuff it, it really picks up very distant signals with a good speaker as well you'll be able to have a lot of fun with this radio so definitely one to consider. But for shortwave, in terms of portables specifically, this one would be my favorite. This radio, the XH Data D808, I feature it often on my channel. It's the one that I use very, very often for my DXing. It does have single sideband. It covers all the bands, you know, medium wave, FM, long wave as well. I don't pick up anything on long wave here in South Africa, but it does. It can do that, although apparently it's not very sensitive on long wave. But for short wave, very good. I think the noise floor on this one, on the XH Data, is a little bit higher than on the Texan PL368. So sometimes, again, if I listen on my XH Data D808 and I just cannot quite identify what is going on i might come to the tech sun and it will be a little bit more intelligible on the tech sun for me so the tech sun is very useful in that sense but these two are very close these these two radios are to be honest my favorite shortwave listening radios and then they also serve me on other bands on medium wave as well on fm as well although they are not they are not my go-to radios for those other bands. If I really just want to do medium wave DXing, I might use one of the other radios I've showed you. But this one is also one of my medium wave DXing radios. So in that sense, this one serves me well for medium wave and for short wave DXing. And of course, I have these two much bigger radios: the Kenwood R1000 and this Barlow Wadley. These, both of these I picked up second-hand. The Bolo Wadley is a top-of-the-line radio. It was released in the 1970s. 
At that time, it was seen as one of the best shortwave radios that had ever been made. It still works, mine, even though it's almost 50 years old. I use it often. That display that you see there is very accurate. Mine is off by 20 kilohertz, but I know that, so I can just add 20 kilohertz to what I see on the screen, and then my frequency is 100% accurate. So you can actually search by just using that dial there and find frequencies. It's a, it's a great radio, and the sound on this radio as well is very very good so I use it I use it quite often it's not my prime shortwave DXing radio but it's a lot of fun to use that just because it is so old and you know it's just something different to use for your DXing Kenwood R1000 excellent receiver in all respects it just works perfectly again it's a second-hand radio I, I got it for a very good price I use it quite often the sound on that one is much better than any of my portables. The SSB functionality on that one is not perfect. I don't know if it's uh, no, if it's just something that went wrong over the years or I'm doing something wrong. But I haven't been able to do any SSB listening on this one. I can hear there is noise, but I just there's no way that I can isolate that that signal and actually hear what is going on. So for that reason, this one is also not actually one of my top radios, although it is an absolutely top-of-the-line receiver. So this brings me to my final conclusion. Out of all these radios, if I really had to choose only one, what would it be? And I think you probably know what I'm going to answer. And I think many of you might agree, some might not, but it will have to be the XH Data D808. This radio, for what it does, is a little marvel. The price is very good. It's not an expensive. It is an expensive radio, but you know, it's not expensive compared to some other models on the on the market. And as I said now in this video, for medium wave, it's terrific. For short wave, it is just excellent. Not so good sound. It doesn't have the best speaker in the world. But you can manage, and you can always, of course, plug in earphones or just plug in an external speaker as well. But if I really, really had to choose only one radio, it would be this one. Of course, this is for me. This is my choice with the things that I enjoy. I really like listening to utility signals. So for me, my final favorite radio must have SSB functionality, which unfortunately disqualifies most of the radios that I have here. But if you are just listening to regular shortwave broadcasts, there are many other options here that I mentioned and showed what they do well. So then, you know, there are probably other radios here that you will enjoy. Right, I would love to hear your comments and also what you would have picked if this were your choice. But to conclude then, this will have to be my favorite radio of 2023.